This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Right in the middle. The comfiest white sheets. Mom to my left, dad to my right, a mosquito net like a crown covering all of us. Whenever a plate breaks, whenever I find an eyelash, whenever I see a shooting star, I wish to be in that bed with both of them in La Usa, eating orange sherbet ice cream. I never tell anyone. If I tell anyone my wish, it won't come true. I have bad dreams también. Bad dreams of growing a beard with my parents still not here. Bad dreams where I'm not up there with them. And I'm 30 years old. Bad dreams of being chased by pirates or running down a hill during a mudslide. The bad dreams, those you have to tell first thing in the morning so they don't stay in your mind and never in the kitchen or else they get in your stomach. That's how you get indigestion, mom told me, and I never forgot. Trip. I've started using the word at school. I began telling my closest friends, Fijate vos, one day I'm taking a trip, like a real, real game of hide and seek. In first grade, I was the only one who didn't have both parents with me. Mali says they left because before I was born, there was a war, and then there were no jobs. Now, most of my friends don't have their dad or mom here either. A few lucky friends have left to be with their parents in La Usa. Most left inside giant planes. At recess, my friends and I talk about eating our first pepperoni pizza like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, eating lasagna like Garfield, eating McDonald's, watching the new Star Wars inside a theater with air conditioning, eating popcorn with butter. I've never tried any of these things except for pizza from Pizza Hut, and that was last Christmas. But will you miss me? Will you? My friends ask. Pues sí, I say, but I don't really know. I ask them if they will miss me. Absolutely, they say, because no one who's left to La Usa has ever come back to visit. Sometimes their grandma or grandpa will walk by on the street and will ask them how so-and-so is, and they respond. So-and-so says hi. That's the closest they come to remembering us. Oh, gracias, doña. Gracias, don. Tell them we say hi. But we never hear from them again. The baker is still here. His wife and all six of his kids también. They look happy. I want what the baker's family has. Everyone in the same room. All my friends and I want to be with our parents, where everything is new, fresh, where garbage is collected by trucks, where water comes out of silver faucets, where it snows the whitest snow, where people have snowball fights and cut real pine trees for Christmas, not spray paint cotton branches in white like we do here. It's because our parents are not here and we're not there that Mays and Junes are sad. For most of us, our grandparents are the ones who show up for Mother's and Father's Day assemblies. It's not that we don't love them. We do. I love Abuelita so much. I love her cooking, the way my face gets stuck in her curly, frizzy hair that she dyes black, her short hair that makes her look like a microphone, her hair that smells like pupusas when she hugs me. I love her two dimples when she smiles, her wide and flat nose with its dark brown mole in the middle that she has to check at the hospital every year to see it doesn't get too big. And I love her fake eyebrows she draws thin with a pencil first thing in the morning. I love my mom, también. I never met my dad, or I have, but I don't remember him. I was about to turn two when he left. He sounds nice over the phone. His voice is deep and raspy, but is still soft, like a sharp stone skipping over water. I always talk to him second, after I talk to mom. 
I remember everything about her. Her harsh voice, like a wave crashing when she got mad at me. Her breath, like fresh.